Hello and welcome to another video by The Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be going over how to manually train your Logitech Harmony Universal Remote to control the Soundcore and Fini Pro soundbar that I recently did a review video on. Make sure to check it out for more information. While this video will be done with the Infini Pro, you can use these steps to add other devices that Logitech doesn't have in their database. This process can also be used for some of Logitech's other universal remote controls as well. And do take note that this will not work for non-IR controllable devices. To get started, you will need your Harmony remote, the Soundcore remote, a USB data cable, and a laptop with the MyHarmony software installed. Once ready, navigate to Devices and select Add Device. Next, put in the manufacturer and model number for the device you want to add and click on Add. The Harmony software will search the database for a match. If it doesn't find one like it did here, you'll be presented with possible options. The ability to search again, or the option to manually train your remote. I did try the Infinity device, and it did not have the correct button layout, and pretty much didn't work for me. So select, I'm sure it's Soundcore Infinity Pro, and click on OK. Next, select the device type of the device that you're adding. For the soundbar, I selected AV receiver and amplifier. Click No under if the device plays radio and then click on Save. You'll need to have your two remotes and data cable ready. Once you have everything together, select Yes and click on Next. Plug your data cable into your Harmony remote and into your computer. Once you see the remote show the computer icon on the screen, wait for the software to detect it. When it does, you should see on the screen instructions to turn the Harmony remote over. This is because the I receiver is on the back and we need to point the other remote at the receiver for it to learn the commands. For me, I just carefully place it on the table, but feel free to place it on something soft, like a blanket or shirt. Once ready, click on Next. Next, we will go through and program a few predetermined buttons based on the device type we selected earlier. To do this, you will hold the Soundcore remote roughly 3 inches from the back of the Harmony remote and single press the button of the command you are trying to teach. You will need to make sure that the Soundcore remote is pointing directly at the window on the back of the Harmony remote. Once the command is registered, the Harmony software will give you another command until it has enough information. If you do not have the button on your remote, you can click skip. If you skip enough in a row, the Harmony software will ask if you want to continue. Select yes if the window pops up and continue teaching the commands you have. Once done, Harmony will ask how you power the device on and off. For the Soundcore and Fini Pro, you use the same button to turn it on and off. So we will select the option and click next. The next question is how inputs are selected. Now the Soundcore and Fini Pro is a little different in that you have a single button that will cycle through the input list, but also has dedicated buttons for TV input and Bluetooth. So for now, select the option, I press a button and it immediately changes to a new input and repeat if necessary and click on next. Side note, Soundcore, if you are watching this, it would be really cool if there was additional hidden commands to jump to all the inputs directly like HDMI, AUX, and Optical. On the next screen, we will add in all the inputs that do not have a specific button on the remote, and make sure to remove the tuner input. Once all set, click on Next. Answer no for the question about if a certain input is always selected on Power On. Next will be to teach the remote more commands. You will follow the same steps as before going through and teaching the commands on the remote, making sure the Soundcore remote is about 3 inches away and that you are directly pointed at the window on the back of the Harmony remote. You will skip a lot of these which is fine and you will not be teaching all the commands from your Soundcore remote right now. Once Harmony has learned the commands it thinks it needs, you will be brought to the device settings. We will now go ahead and add the rest of our commands missing from the remote. To do this, click on add or fix a command. From here, we will type in the name of the command we are going to teach and click next. After, you will follow the same steps used to teach the command previously. You will then go through this process for each missing button you want to have Harmony know. After that's done, I recommend going into the settings and change the repeat count. This is a feature of the Harmony remote where it will send the same command multiple times to make sure the device receives it. What I ran into was that the setting was set to 3 repeats and for things like power on or off, it would be setting the command 4 times which would leave it in the same state it started, causing it to seem to be broken. To change the setting, click on Change Device Settings and click Device Command Repeats. In the new window, change it to 0 repeats and click on Finish. The other thing you'll want to tweak depending on your setup is the settings for if the remote itself or the hub sends out the commands. For me, I don't have an IR blaster or the hub pointed towards the soundbar, so I need to keep it as the remote. To change this, click on Settings for the remote itself, click on More, and select Remote and Hub Assignments. On the new window that opens up, search for the Infinity Pro, change it to Remote, and click on Finish. Once done, click on Sync towards the top right hand corner to push everything we just set up down to the remote control. This will take a few minutes and will be done over the USB data cable. Now that the syncing is done, we can go ahead and test out the remote control before adding it into activities. 
Great, so it looks like all the commands we taught the remote work as expected. So let's go ahead and add in the soundbar control into our activities. To do this, go to Activities in the Harmony software and select the activity you want to edit. Click on Change your settings. On the page for devices in the activity, add the soundbar and click on Next. Change the device that controls the volume to the soundbar and click Next again. Unless you changed around your cabling, the next page should be left alone. If you did make changes, you will need to adjust the input as needed. On the next screen, you can either select the input the soundbar needs to be on for the activity to work or leave it as not set as input. You'll need to finish answering questions for the activity, which will be dependent on your setup. Once on the last page, verify everything looks correct and click on Done. You can now sync your changes, or if you have other activities you want to change, you can do this before syncing. After you sync your changes in the software, don't forget to sync the setting changes on your remote. With our activities updated, let's try one out to make sure it works as expected. Great! The activity turns on the soundbar along with everything else correctly, and now I get to be back to only having one remote control for all my different entertainment devices. Do you have a universal remote? Let me know in the comments below if you do or not, as well as why. And if you made it this far in the video, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to be notified anytime I release a new video. Thank you for watching.